Well, I guess that was just too easy. <laughs> Get it? Like, two coolers, too easy, and pun jokes. Welcome back to Tech yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a CPU gaming showdown. And how many cores do you actually need when it comes to playing some of the latest titles? And also, is it better to have lesser cores and higher clock speeds as opposed to more cores and lower clock speeds? Let's find out. Now, quickly going through the contestants, we have the 6600K. This is a four core, four threaded CPU. We've got this at 4.6 gigahertz. Then we've also got the 3930K, which is six cores, 12 threads. Got this to 4.4 gigahertz. And then we have the E5 2658V3, which is a Haswell 12 core, 24 threaded beast. This thing, I managed to get this to 2.6 gigahertz on all cores. Then lastly, in the background here, we have my dual E5 2670 rig which sports 16 cores 32 threads and they all go up to 3 gigahertz now moving on straight into the benchmarks i did have all four of these test systems under the 980 ti and i decided to drop the settings down to 1440p high with no anti-aliasing and what this allowed me to do was it allowed me to stress the cpus more so than if i had the settings at 4k ultra which would be stressing the gpu more and what we found in the first game here, Just Cause 3, there wasn't really any huge difference to note except the 6600K did come in first at 118 average FPS, as opposed to the Dual Xeon rig, which actually came in last place. However, it still scored over 100 FPS average there. However, moving on to the GTA 5, it painted a completely different picture with problems starting before we even booted the game on the Dual Xeon rig. And we actually had to disable one of the CPUs to get this game working. However, once I got the game booted up, it came in noticeably lower than the other three contestants. And this was quite surprising since the Haswell E5 2658V3 is clocked even lower than the Dual Xeon setup. Then moving on into Project Cars, we see this trend continuing with the E5 2650A, which is clocked lower, actually beating out the Dual Xeon setup. However, this time around, we didn't have any boot problems. And then moving on into the last benchmark, I just did this for a bit of fun. I decided to drop CSGO all the way down to 720p low settings just to stress those CPUs. And what we found was that all the CPUs performed really well in this game. And I was quite surprised since this game is the oldest of all four games that I tested. So there we have it, the results are pretty conclusive. If you are a hardcore gamer, then you will generally want to go with a single CPU setup. However, for someone like me, a content creator, I'm only looking for around 60 FPS average, which the Dual Xeon setup in the background scored over that in every single game that I tested. So I'm actually quite happy with that. And even those minimums didn't drop below 60 on any four of these games, which impressed me a lot on all four of the CPUs. Though it was a bit confusing as to why the lower clocked 12 core 24 threaded CPU was actually dominating the dual Xeon setup. I'll have to look into that a little bit more, though it does seem that dual CPU setups are not really designed for gaming. So that should come as no surprise since they are designed for workstation and productivity. Although one thing I will add, if you are a competitive gamer or you're a 144 hertz gamer, then you'll probably want to go with the latest and greatest IPC like Skylake. Even though in my opinion it doesn't represent the best value for money, it still did perform the best in the benchmarks. Though it was impressive to see the 3930K scoring quite close to the 6600K and actually doing better in productivity, which is something that I really like and something that I've been eyeing off lately. And especially since I've ordered in a Xeon E5 2650, I'm going to see if I can get this thing to 5 gigahertz and maybe revisit these benchmarks for you guys. Is it too late now to say I'm sorry? Cause I'm missing more than just your body. We're gonna be overclocking. Overclocking. Overclocking.